introduce the topics and um, uh, move forward for discussion. So I'm heading uh, an agency called New Deal Design. We deal with strategic technology design. Yet the story here is about a company called uh, Viv. Uh, it's also a story about living better together. And the story of Viv uh, starts with a uh, human interaction between me and two entrepreneurs. Um, Amit Haller and Ami Avrahami, with whom I worked for the last uh, 20 years on electronics, uh, gadgets, and so on. And they came to me and said, you know, we are dealing a lot with real estate and we want to reinvent the thinking around uh, housing and uh, residential experiences. And we don't want to be dealing with architects. We want to think like uh, product. We want to think like service. So uh, with that, uh, as you see, uh, we started uh, the briefing. Um, home ownership is at a crisis uh, throughout the whole Western world and in California and the US, this is a real acute crisis. Uh, nearly half of the gross income is spent on living. And when we started uh, dealing with research and interactions with team members and a variety of parties, we plotted this uh, living line and decided to uh, focus on the rush hour of life when people start their life after uh, educating uh, themselves in the university and start thinking about uh, you know, getting uh, families, uh, maybe raising chi uh, children and so on. Uh, stresses are uh, off, uh, off the roof, and um, this is something that, uh, including also uh, decisions about housing. Um, originally, um, the entrepreneurs who uh, worked with us uh, had multiple companies that dealt with different technological aspects, some dealing with foundation, reinventing the wall, and so on. But through the work, we discovered that the only way to really make it effective is through vertically integrating everything into one company, a new formed uh, company called Viv, which was uh, branded my, uh, by our, our agency. And Viv uh, mission is about building the next wave of better living. Um, the name, as it suggests, deals with uh, life, uh, joie de vivre, and so on. Uh, very important uh, to uh, really remind ourselves that we're not dealing just with technology or innovation, but with actually uh, human societal uh, needs. Um, I'm going to go quickly through uh, eight areas of uh, innovation that we've dealt with. Uh, living as an investment, uh, creating a digital layer that is um, uh, connecting everybody as if they are in a village, actually allowing people to develop their own talents through uh, providing a, a project room, uh, creating more porous uh, apartments or houses that allow people to come and go, or robo robots to come and go and give you services, uh, dealing with the interaction inside the home, a little bit like a village, um, dealing with uh, a conscious community, and uh, a lot of work about wellness, uh, both uh, wellness of the mind and the body, and finally uh, architecting the whole neighborhood as a sort of a modern village. I'm going to very quickly go through some slides uh, that represents a variety of um, uh, pr uh, principles we were dealing with. Uh, a lot of them are uh, known, but were not put together um, uh, as one big um, uh, a unit. Um, now, I'm uh, obviously uh, multimodality mobility is part of it. Um, you see a little bit more of um, uh, illustration of uh, the principle of uh, the, the village, if you wish. And then we took this uh, village concept into the um, uh, apartment. Uh, re, okay, I assume so. There was a problem. Yeah. Uh, re. Uh, uh, 
repurposing the kitchen into uh, some kind of a command center, but also the social center of the apartment. And in doing so, creating a multi-layered uh, usage of the kitchen. Um, I'm going to run relatively quickly. A, a lot of effort was made into uh, putting green into the house both in a layer of uh, gardening, growing your herbs or vegetables, uh, having some kind of a relaxation garden, but also as something that could purify the air. Uh, for instance, you could have uh, little trolleys that could take your uh, uh, herbs uh, closer to the window when the sun is out, and then you could actually roll them into the kitchen for uh, uh, cooking. Um, now, all that is combined in an app that uh, obviously gives you the traditional quote-unquote smart home uh, controls, but also more, uh, more control over the financial elements and so on. Uh, we are building uh, wall panels that are built into the uh, environment. Um, and last, and most probably more substantial, uh, California enacted a very aggressive law that allows um, uh, building new uh, units into uh, traditional American um, uh, single-family homes. Effectively, it's uh, eradicating the sing single-family um, uh, home zoning. Uh, this is called an ADU, an accessory dwelling unit. It's a prefab uh, made from uh, HPA, uh, high-performance acrylic. And it's designed so it could be next to the original house with a very uh, specific set of rules about privacy. And we are going to develop these uh, next to multifamily uh, projects that are going to go up um, uh, in the next year or two. These are already out there. Uh, the first prototypes are being finished actually this week. Uh, we're talking about a, a studio layout with, as you see here, still a, a green wall and a partition that could be moved. Uh, it's about 40 square meters, so it's quite small, but still gives you a lot of um, uh, appliances and a lot of uh, high quality um, uh, services with all the digital connection and the digital management of it. Uh, one thing that uh, came from the wellness is the ability to control light. In this case, what you see is augmenting uh, sunlight with uh, LED light to uh, really uh, perfect your circadian uh, rhythms and uh, affect your health. Uh, so that's uh, the ADU and that's uh, the story of uh, Viv. So, uh, Gary, um, when we spoke yesterday, you were saying that there hasn't yet been a, an Elon Musk coming along and disrupting the housing sector. Why do you think it's been sort of so long that these sort of home, our homes are almost the sort of least changed and transformed? You know, uh, I think it's a giant opportunity, uh, and at the same time, it's uh, a lot of uh, entrenched industries that are taking very, very long time to change uh, their perception of what they're supposed to do. Uh, but I do think that because of the economic pressure that I just uh, introduced, uh, uh, presented and digital technology, the disruption is, is about to happen. And how much is your uh, unit going to cost? I cannot say precisely, but it's in a ballpark of $200,000, which is considered to be uh, quite cheap in uh, Californian uh, terms. Great. And uh, Matthias, I'd love you to sort of talk a bit about you. Your, your company sells 50 million products every year, um, everything from fridges to uh, cookers. And in fact, he told me yesterday, I'm just going to embarrass him for a moment, and his wife will love this, but apparently his favorite gadget is the cooker. So this is a new age man we have in front of us. Um, but we, but I'd love to just hear your vision in, in 10 years' time, paint a vision of what kind of things we should be expecting in our homes. So uh, in 10 years' time, uh, the homes will change dramatically, rapidly, but uh, home and household appliances are always a reflection of society and the mirror of society itself and the human beings which are living in their homes. So that means we have a technolog technological aspect, we have a society aspect and uh, individual aspect. 
from technological side, we will see over the next 10 years fully connected appliances and homes. In 10 years' time, there will no launch of electrical appliances without connectivity and other technology, that's for sure. On the other hand side, we have always to have in mind what is the job to be done from an appliances. And here we have the aspect of sovereignty of time. 50 years ago, an average time uh, in the household, four hours spent mainly done by women. This reduced uh, to 90 minutes uh, in these days' times and shared by women and men. So that means we have created as well with household appliances enablement of time. That's a very important point. So we can use this for other things. Second point from society-wise is we do have a job as well to do for sustainability, reducing water and energy. We are, as a company are selling 50 million units a year, so we have at least from our company several hundred million. So our duty is reducing water and energy consumptions, playing a role in sustainability, and we are doing this. Household appliances over the last 10-15 uh, years already reduced consumption of energy and water by 50%, uh, we are going further. And uh, with respect to uh, the presentation of Mohamed Yunus as well, I do believe in the next 10 years, hopefully, poverty will uh, reduce dramatically, and we can give as well the participation for basic appliances to poor people. So, for example, in India, we worked out an oven for uh, less than 20 euros, and we are practicing based on the work of Mohammed Yunus microfinance, and so we can let participate very poor people as well on the advantages for, for cooking and washing. And I want to talk a bit about um, the role of big tech companies. And there was a great quote in the Financial Times recently from Richard Waters who said, rather than technology or devices, the main force behind today's must-have products are services and the ecosystem. And big tech is now the biggest force in personal tech, and it's forcing traditional companies like yours, he didn't say like yours in the FT, but maybe he did, to, to align your strategies with their ecosystems. Absolutely. How far are Amazon and Google going to win because it's an ecosystem and a services story? You know, the home is a special thing because your life happened at home. And therefore, people are sometimes more reluctant than outside the home, what they are letting bringing in. For sure, the big Chinese uh, tech companies like Alibaba or Tencent or the Google and Amazons, they have the technical power to do nearly everything. But we are behave and deal with analog techniques as well. To prepare a great uh, uh, dish is something where you need analog uh, competencies. And uh, most of the digital companies, at least up to now, don't have shown that have the competencies for the best dish. So, Gary, is he right? I think he's absolutely right. I think uh, there is uh, a delusion that uh, speaking uh, to a microphone in the home is something that people like doing. Uh, I think very few people want to uh, bark at Alexa to, you know, cook a pizza or something like that. Uh, so there is a somewhat of a, a technologist, uh, for technology's sake, approach um, that is not necessarily human and actually not necessarily applicable to home. So I think that uh, a lot of the approaches that are taken today are uh, going to be revised and we'll have to um, come to a new balance between what technology can or cannot uh, provide us and uh, relax a little bit more the expectations. I think um, what Matthias was uh, suggesting here Cooking is an activity that will take more as an enjoyment or a, sales, a, a sense of a gratification rather than as a utility. And a lot of the technology approach coming uh, from uh, Alexa, from uh, Amazon or others are, are based on a utility paradigm. So um, yesterday we were talking obviously about data and privacy, which is obviously one yeah. of the big concerns around the connected home. Yeah. And you said to me, uh, data is not, that mu is not actually that valuable. Can you just sort of expand on that? Because it's such a counterintuitive thing to say in an audience who are obsessed by more and more data. Yeah, so that's, uh, uh, I have the perception that there is an uh, over uh, value pres uh, presented 
and percept, uh, perception on, on, on data because when you actually look at what the data surveillance uh, industry is giving me is actually usually very bad ads that are not causing me to change my behavior and are not causing me to consume anything. So uh, I think uh, my experience and experiences that uh, we found out in research, uh, people are using a lot of these uh, devices uh, like Alexa or others more as a curiosity rather than a real uh, fundamental shift in their behavior. So looking at the role of connected devices when everything becomes a potential surveillance mechanism in the home. Yeah. Um, I was struck, I interviewed someone um, last week uh, from, from Darktrace and he said that he looked at the Samsung terms of, um, terms of uh, conditions of buying the Samsung TV and it said in the terms of conditions don't have confidential conversations in front of your television because we might be listening. I mean, does that mean every single device should now have a terms of condition saying we might be collecting data and we might be listening to you from, from your fridge, from your toaster? There's something which launched at CES, which is um, underpants, which can detect how stressful you are. You know, is that going to be available to employers? I mean, this is kind of into scary territory. And, but as a design sort of detail, does that mean every single product has to disclose these kind of disclaimers? You know, there are a lot of uh, bad products and bad uh, ideas out there. Uh, I think we should take it all with a grain of salt. Uh, we all use smartphones. Smartphones are unbelievably uh, sophisticated in terms of surveilling after you. And yet we use them because for most of us, they are good. Now, I think we should be very controlled and in our approach to that and uh, not be too scared away from technology. At the same time, uh, pay attention and limit the ability of technology and technologists to uh, interfere with our human lives. Matthias, so, what's your take? Uh, we have, uh, or you have the brand as an important trustee. So that means people often uh, uh, trust in a brand. And if you have a brand uh, with a long reputation, then uh, people are willing to accept to give you your data. And uh, we act as well seriously uh, in a trusted way. Uh, we have four brands in our portfolio with, uh, with um, uh, more than a hundred years experience and so and we promise that we do the utmost we are certificated uh, to have the data what consumers are uh, giving us confidentially taking confidentially that's very important to give the consumers the trust the data uh, lies only in your hands or in the hands uh, from the company are not sold to a third party so what's the role of a designer in you know, writing these terms of reference and writing the UX and actually the user interfaces to ensure that there isn't sort of a misuse of data or people aren't being misdirected to kind of disclose all their data when actually they shouldn't be? What should designers be doing? Do they have a responsibility to sort of call people out or call out bad behavior like that in the industry? Uh, absolutely. I think uh, designers are now um, part of the decision-making circle. And in doing so, they need to uh, present a point of view that is responsible and positive. And in my mind, uh, in my experience, I've seen that designers can uh, create a positive impact by lowering their zeal, if you wish, to collect too much data or to do things that are counter to human or common sense. Uh, sometimes it's just a waste of time and a waste of money to invest in those technologies that are basically bringing not, you know, nothing. Um, so designers are part of it and um, should be judged accordingly yeah. and uh, should be uh, pushing forward uh, more humanistic values. So Steffi is talking a lot that she integrated here many artists uh, in the DLD conference and designers are a kind of intermediate. They, are, they have a, a seismographic um, uh, idea often and they have a very important role to integrate it in the company uh, between development and uh, finished product. Yeah. So we, we talk a lot about sustainability in the industry and the smart home. And I think one of the things I worry about is that if I buy a fridge and it's now an, a connected fridge, in 15 years' time, how will I know that the software won't sort of um, 
basically be sort of out of touch and be, you won't re sort of redo it anymore, so I have to buy a new fridge. How do you, you know, everyone thinks about hardware and how long that takes to sort of rust, but what about sort of software? I mean, what is the responsibility of a company like yours and Gaddy to sort of think about the software side of it and how long that's going to take? You will download your new program. So that means the new series of household appliances, they will have an electronic board which is called System Master. And uh, if you have a new version, you can download uh, the new version. And for example, for your, uh, for your oven or for your washing machine, you can download a recipe or you can download a new uh, program. So this happened either directly or via uh, Bluetooth wireless. What's the most challenging recipe you've downloaded in your cooker? So I, for me, I'm cooking. Uh, cooking is, is for me the most important thing because it's in a really process-oriented schedule, which I have uh, a remaining kind of anarchic, chaotic, and human being way of doing. So recipes for downloading giving me ideas for cooking. But so, they still do the, uh, the dishes. So talking about, I mean, everyone sort of comes with a smart home panel and thinks about gadgets. I, I mean, I think I do. What gadget would you love to exist right now that you've been thinking about in the future, but if you can imagine it, that it would exist right now, what would that be for you? That's a very tough question. <laughs> uh, I think, you know, a few things. I, 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 I deal a lot with gadgets, but I also cherish the times when I'm outside that uh, realm of technology. And I think um, giving the people, giving people opportunity to be outside of the influence of the digital technology is also something very important. So I get enough gadgets with whatever they have now. I uh, talked to Matthias and you yesterday about uh, for me, the pinnacle of cooking is baking. Mm -hmm. And I wish there was something that would teach me what to do right, because every time I bake, it's basically a disaster. So that's a, a, a relevant example, but I also want to really emphasize the notion of uh, putting technology in the background, not in the foreground, and that's something that we should really uh, promote. Gadi, we have a we have a cooking sensor and a baking sensor in our oven. Yeah. Uh, I invite you at home. We are uh, baking. The baking is perfect, and we can uh, discuss it. So next yeah. week we can do a live baking on stage. Exactly. With, yeah. with a smart home of the future. And what about for you in terms of your? I mean, you invent the gadgets, but what would your personal gadget so be? So besides be be besides the oven uh, as a personal favorite, uh, I admit uh, as well, Gadi. I have so many gadgets and dealing uh, professionally with gadgets. Um, my favorite is uh, then in the free time to stick to a good old analog book. That's amazing. Here we are at a tech conference and we're in praise of a gadget-free life from a designer of gadgets and um, a book for, for the man who just sells 50 million appliances around the world. I think there's some irony in that. Just as a last quick question, what, you both think about smart homes a lot. What scares you most about the smart home of the future? You know, I, I, I think that it's not specifically for smart homes. By the way, this is kind of a misnomer. Uh, we, we don't need a smart home, we need a wise home. Mm. So something that is more than smart. But just uh, in general, in the tech industry, uh, there should be a lot more respect to uh, humanity and the human connection. And when it comes to uh, the most personal environment, to home, we should be building technology and building uh, the right uh, applications so we could enforce human connections rather than uh, break these down. Great, thank you. And finally, Matthias. So for me, is the misuse of technology one of the biggest fears? So we, we are on, a, on an edge to create a lot of exciting opportunities with new technology, with connectivity, and the misuse of technology, what you mentioned with the Samsung TV, uh, could uh, interfere this uh, dramatically. So misuse is my biggest fear. So the solution for the panel is go and buy a book and network and talk to everyone. So I think that's a perfect DLD panel. Yeah. So thank you very much. That's the smartest home. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.